What's up, Facebook? What's up, everybody all around the world? <clears throat> it's Solace Kingdom there. King of Four Feet. Guys, coming on here every day. I hope everybody's doing well. But guys, I want to come on here and, uh, you know, I really, I just want the Lord, you know, I want him to, to have his way. But it, it was a Bible verse in Psalms, uh, I believe Psalms 37. And let me go to it. But it, it talks about uh, God said, keep his way. And I want to talk about keeping the Lord's way. I want, I want to talk about that. Let me go to it real quick. But it's something it, like the verse talks about waiting on the Lord. But this right here is key to this is key to the whole scripture, I believe. And I, I think it's key to everything, you know, in, in Christ. Keep his way. Like what? Is, what is exactly does that mean? Keep his way. So let me get to that. Uh, let, me, let me get to it real quick. Psalms 37. Let me make sure I'm talking. Psalms 37. Hallelujah. Psalms 37, 34. Thank you, Lord. It says, and also in, in the same chapter, if you read the whole Psalms 37, it's powerful. It talks about the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. What I talked about the other day, and he delights in his way. But Psalms 37, 34 says, wait on the Lord. All right, it's very simple, but this is what the Lord is leading me to talk about. It says, wait on the Lord and keep his way. That, that right there resonated with me. It says, keep his way. And he, like before it says, I mean, right after it says, keep his way, it says, and he shall, he, not, not you, and he shall exalt you to inherit the land. So whatever God promised you, it may seem like it's not coming, but if you wait on the Lord, it's talking about being patient. Psalms 37, 34, wait, it's so simple, but you need to hear this. Wait on the Lord and keep, remember this, and keep his way. Say, I will keep his way. That is so important because a lot of times, remember, when they got, when they got free, when, when the Lord released them from Egypt to the promised land, they, they, they weren't patient. They were impatient. And a lot of them didn't keep his way. Right? They turned. They, they, they were so impatient waiting on the promise. But the Lord said to those who wait on the promise, he said, wait on the Lord and keep his way and he shall exalt you. He shall lift you up. He shall make you inherit the land. So, guys, it's, it's something about waiting on the Lord. He always talks about waiting, but it's also something important about keeping his way. He blesses those who are faithful. He sees you when you're faithful. It, it may look like, remember, he said it may look like. Things aren't going your way and you're doing right. And you're like, Lord, I'm doing everything right, but things aren't going my way. But the Lord said that vengeance is mine. I, the Lord, will recompense. He will repay you. He will make sure that whatever was stolen from you, whatever was wrongfully done to you at the right time, if you wait on him, wait on the Lord and keep his way and he shall exalt you to, to inherit the land. And then it goes on to say in that verse, when the wicked are cut off, you shall see it when the wicked are cut off with your eyes. You shall see it. So I know you see, if you read Psalms 37, uh, it talks about, you know, he said, do not fret when evil people bring, bring together, when they prosper in their way. He said, because eventually they will be no more, right? God doesn't, he's not pleased with wickedness. He's not pleased. He's not a God that rewards people who do wicked. No, he, he gives, he makes sure that he distinguishes the righteous from the unrighteous, right? He talks about it in Malachi. If you read uh, Malachi, I believe in chapter three, I believe he talks, he talks about it in Malachi though. If you read it, he talks about that, the distinguishment from, from a righteous person and from an unrighteous person. He said, stop saying that uh, the, the, um, the unrighteous are rewarded are just like the righteous. no. God is, God is not a God that rewards the righteous and the unrighteous the same. He will cut off the unrighteous. It may not look like it right now because he's giving them time. But if they keep doing what they're doing, keep doing whatever they want, he's going to cut them off. And he said, you shall see it. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. So, guys, I want you to learn how to wait on the Lord. Wait on him. But most importantly, I want you to learn while you're waiting. Don't don't go do your own thing. Don't go, you know, add another job. Go, just start doing a whole bunch of different things just to supply all of your needs. No, 
Wait on the Lord and keep his way. Right? Live righteously. That's how you keep his way. How else do you keep his way? Think. Right? You go to church. You get the word. You read your Bible. You pray. You treat people right. You do what's right in his sight, not other people's sight. You keep his way. You stay faithful to him. And he will exalt you to inherit the land. Don't give up. Don't give up on God. It's not over. I know you see other people that don't care about God. They don't serve him. But they're, they, it looks like they're doing better than you. They don't care about him. They're, they're doing whatever they want. But it looks. Looks can be deceiving. There's people that's doing better than you financially. Maybe that's what you look at. But they're hurting inside. Like never before. But if you wait on the Lord, you will be prosperous inside and outside. I want both. But you know which one I care about the most? My inner self. Because my inner self creates my outer self. I would not be doing these videos. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't have been, the blessings I've been receiving since I've got saved, I wouldn't have received it. The favor, the people that I've met, the increase. The financials, finances that God's blessed me with since I've got saved, the purpose, the mindset, the joy. Because remember, happiness and joy are two different things. The people of the world that don't follow God, they don't have no joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. That's different. That's a whole nother level. Happiness is tangible. Happiness is based on your condition out here, your car, your, your house, your, your environment. But joy is eternal. It's spiritual. You can't, you can't buy joy. It comes from him. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Right? It's certain things you can't get unless you're in Christ. Like purpose. See, when I wasn't in Christ, I was living in half of my purpose. But now I know exactly where I'm going. I know exactly what he wants me to do with my life. And it's getting clearer and clearer every day. I never limit him. I know the purpose. The purpose is to save souls. But it's through whatever ways he wants me to do it. So it can be through music. It can be through these videos. It can be through business. However he wants to do it. But I know the purpose of why I'm doing it. Why I'm doing it. So guys, I want you to meditate on this. Psalms 37, 34. What? This is the Lord. Wait on the Lord. When I look at the word, I see the spirit. I see the spirit flowing over the word. Just moving over it right when I go to it. Because this is what you need to hear right now. Wait on the Lord. Wait. And keep his way. Keep his way. What is the Lord's way? Do what's right. Do what's right. Stop being greedy for gain. Stop doing anything for money. Stop compromising. Stop compromising. Stop gossiping. Stop doing all these things that you know not his way. Repent. All of us. Me too. This is for everybody. When I'm talking to you, I'm talking to me. Because this is the Lord's word. Keep his way. And he shall exalt you. If you can wait. Look, some people know how to wait. But while they're waiting, they're doing whatever it is they want to do. And that's not what the Lord says. He says, wait on the Lord. My camera. He says, wait on the Lord and keep his. This is, I want you to remember this. Keep his way part. Keep his way and he shall exalt you to inherit the land. So guys, I want you to meditate on this. And then it says, when the wicked are cut off, you shall see. You, you will see your enemies cut off. Don't worry about them. Pray for them. Yes, you don't. You don't want them to get cut off. But if they keep coming against you, they're going to have to get cut off because you're righteous. You're doing what's right. I don't want, look, you my enemy. I don't want you to get cut off. I want you to be saved. I want you to prosper. I want you to succeed. I want you, I want you to be blessed. I'm praying for you if you are my enemy. I don't want you to get cut off. But if you keep coming against me and I'm doing what's right, for the, I'm doing what's right in the Lord's sight, you will be cut off. Because you're not coming against me. You're actually coming against the Lord. And anybody that comes against the Lord will be cut off. That's what people don't get. So guys, wait 
on the Lord. Keep his way and he shall exalt you to inherit the land in due season at the right time. I, the Lord, will make it happen. I think about times to where I was crying and like, Lord, bless me. And then months later, he blessed me. I, I, I'm thinking like, Lord, what if I what if I what if I already knew this was happening? Would I have cried? Would I have been so mad, so frustrated in that waiting time? When I think about it, I said, man, if I knew this was going to happen, I would have praised you more in that waiting period. I would have kept your way more. I wouldn't have been mad. I would have been so joyful if I knew you were about to do this. And guess what? The Lord doesn't want to hide what he's about to do for you. He said, and he told us what he's going to do for us in, in uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good. It, what? So you're telling me every day something good is happening for me. I, can, I don't have to worry. I don't have to cry. I don't have to be mad. I don't have to be frustrated because he says, I am God. Be still and know that I am God. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good, not for disaster. So if it looks like my life is going down disaster, something ain't right. That's not his plan. So I got to switch my perspective because something amazing is about to happen. Something great is about to happen. I might can't see it physically, but I got to see it spiritually. And when I see it spiritually, it will happen physically. It will manifest because I'm keeping my eyes. I'm keeping my eyes on the prize of what God showed me. I'm walking by faith, not by sight. It's a whole different game. When you wait on the Lord and keep his way, he will exalt you to manifest what he promised. He will manifest the blessing. People will see you succeed. They will see it happen. Guys, I've been in a situation to where I was having faith, doing these videos every day, and it looked like nobody was celebrating me. Nobody was happy for me. No, That's what it felt like. But I was doing these videos every day, then all of a sudden, the Lord just blessed me. And when he blessed me, you know, people show up when you start getting blessings. All you, all you can see is just people celebrating you. But that didn't get to me. I said, this was the Lord. Because in the waiting period, nobody was there for me. Nobody but him. He was there. Because I kept his way. I waited on him and kept his way. And that's why you see me give him so much glory. And you, when he does this next thing he's doing for me, I'm going crazy with the glory. I'm going to make sure you know who did it. Always. God did it. That's, that's the only person that did it. Nobody else is going to do this for you. Nobody else is going to bless you. Nobody else is going to heal you. God is going to do it. Yes, he's going to use people to bless you. He's going to do it through people. That's why you have to always love people. People are important. I'm not saying you're not important, but God is more important. God is my source. If I'm not good with God, people aren't going to be good with me. He's not going to give me favor through people when I don't have favor with him. So that's why you got to keep his way. Wait on the Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. But, I, I, guys, I don't. if you are my enemy, I don't want you to get cut off. I love you. I'm praying for you. I'm praying that the Lord turns your heart from not being my enemy. I love you because I don't want you to get cut off. All right? I want you to seek the Lord. Okay? We, you seek the Lord, me and you will be good. Because in Jesus, God is love. And love covers a multitude of sin, guys. But the Lord looks at your heart. He looks at your mind. Me, for, for all of us. So, guys, I want you to meditate on Psalms 37.4. I mean, uh, th yeah, that's a good one, too. Take the light in the Lord. He'll give you your heart's desire. But Psalms 37. Just read the whole Psalms 37. I believe it's 37, 34. Read the whole Psalms 30, 37 because it's powerful. The whole thing is powerful. All right, it talks about the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. It talks about commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. It's so much information in that one chapter, that, that one section, right, in 37. It's so powerful. Read it. It talks about, he says, don't get angry. Don't get angry when you see wicked people prospering. Okay, he said they will be cut off. 
You can't do wickedness and be right in, the, in, in God's sight. Nobody. You cannot do it. I don't care how much money they got. The Lord will cut them off. I don't care. He don't play that. He distinguishes righteous. The, see, people think that God has the righteous and the unrighteous together like this. No, he sees the wicked and he sees the righteous and he's waiting for the wicked to repent. I was with the wicked. I was unrighteous. Right? But I had to repent and be saved. I didn't save myself. He saved me. He saved me. I just received it. He did it. All right. I want you to know God knows. He sees the, he see, you, you think that God is rewarding the, no. He said he makes his son, his face to shine upon the, the, the wicked and the righteous. Yes, he loves us all. He wakes us up every morning, but he sees, he is going to judge the wicked just like he's going to judge the righteous. He, he sees everything. The Lord has discernment. He has wisdom and he's given us discernment. Stop saying that the righteous and the wicked are the same. It's not. It's not. The reward is not the same. There's a penalty for your wickedness. The Lord loves you so much. He's being patient with you. He's long suffering. He's being patient with you. But if you don't turn, he will get you. He will get you too. And if you don't, then... That's, that's you. You got a choice. Life and death is on in, in the power of the tongue. You have choice. I remember one, one of my dad's good friends told me, gave me some good wisdom. And he told me, I, I was asking, how could I, you know, how could I do better in business? And he said, you know, pray to God about choices. He said, because you're a great, great young man. You're doing good. You're seeking the Lord. It's a while ago, a couple years ago. And he said, all you got to do is pray to the Lord about making the right choices. If you make the right choices, everything will work for you. If you make the right decisions with your life, how can you fail when you're doing the Lord's will? Choices. I want you to search that word up. Your decision making. Say, Lord, help me to make the right choices. Help me to make the right decisions. And a lot of this nonsense you're going through, a lot of these things that you're going through, you know, you wouldn't go through it if you made the right choice. So start asking God. It says, acknowledge me in all your ways. When you acknowledge him in your way, it's a choice. All day long, you're making choices. Should I do this? Should I start this business? Should I go there? Should I eat this? Choices. With your health. You want better health. Are you making the right choices? You want better, you want your faith to be stronger. You want to be, you want to be more, you know, grow your spiritual growth. Choices. You can choose to pray to God. You can choose to come in his presence, soak in his presence. You can choose to worship him, to listen to him. Just come sit in his presence more and grow spiritually. And grow your connection and relationship with Jesus. Open up your Bible. That's why you're doing it. You're not doing this to be seen. You're not reading the Bible for, you're not reading this for a reward. You're already rewarded. You're saved. When you're saved, you have eternal life when you leave the earth, but you got a more abundant life on earth now. Now the Lord can show you why you're really here on the earth when you're saved. Now you can know exactly what you're here for, the mission, the purpose when you're saved. When I wasn't saved, I didn't. I knew my gift. I used my gift, but guess what? I was in the wrong location, with where people thought it was the right people. I was with successful people in the wrong location, the wrong industry with the right gift. But now the Lord showed me a whole nother vision. See, I know it's gonna happen. I, I mean, I, I know what's about to happen. Why? Because I'm in his presence and he show. Look, guys, if you would just get in his presence, he will show you what's about to happen. I don't look. I don't care what people is telling you about where your life is right now. When the Lord gives you a vision, 
I stay in my vision. I, that's why I act the way I do. That's why I'm doing these videos every day. I'm not, you're right here. I'm, I'm in a whole nother level. I'm, I'm not even right here. You see two people or how many people on here? I see one million people watching this. I see one million souls being saved. I see one million souls following Christ. I'm talking about people that, ne that haven't been saved. And then for the people that are saved, I see them encouraged, uplifted through these videos, through, through the Lord using me. And I'm talking about physical impact. I'm talking about, I'm talking about 1 million people that I actually touched, that are actually seeing me, actually spoke to me or seeing me talk and actually changed their life. I'm not just talking about 1 million views to where 1 million people, no, I'm talking about an actual touch. Because I believe the Lord has us here, just like Martin Luther King, Obama, whatever. All these different people that are actually touching people's lives. That's why the Lord has us here, to make a touch. The people that created Mac, I got my Mac computer right here. They touch, they changed my life. I make my music through here. I make photos, flyers. I make my websites through here. They touched my life. This Mac changed my life. This phone changed my life. It's helping me build my life. This phone this phone, the person that, what if they didn't create the phone? The plane, the car changed my life. It's a touch. Your product, your gift is, is, is supposed to ch touch somebody's life and change it. Facebook touched people's life and it's changing it. Instagram, you can say what you want. Social media, the internet. Change people's life. God bless. Guys. Yes. You're here to touch. All I need. I hear, I hear Brian Courtney Wilson. All I need is a touch from you. All right. That's all you. All we need is a touch from the Lord. That's all we need is a touch from him. All right. That's why. Why did Jesus come here? To touch. That's why he came. He came here to touch everybody's life. It's, it's so amazing that Jesus touched everybody's life, but he's waiting for us to touch him. <laughs> the lady with the issue of blood, I have a picture right here because I got to remember on my wall, my prayer wall. Jesus already healed her before she came and touched him. He was just waiting for her to receive it. He was, wa he was a walking healing. He was a walking healer. Waiting for people to recognize who he was. If you could just recognize who's in front of you. If you could just recognize. Do you know? Listen to me. Because God. You don't understand. Arian. You don't understand. I recognize who you are. My friends on here. Anita. I recognize who you are. You're not just a random person here. God is using you to help me. And he's using me to help you. I don't think you understand that. All of us have God in us. And if we can just allow him to use us, we will see him manifest. Ariane, you touched my life. Anita, you touched my life. You helped, you blessed me. Other people on here, you blessed me. Right? We blessed each other. That's what... We're here to bless each other. We're here to recognize who each other are. I honor you guys. I'm thankful for you guys. Because Jesus... Look. If you know who God is... Luke, what's up, brother? If you recognize who God is, you won't disrespect people no more. Because he uses people. See, what if Jesus was here? See, they were disrespecting Jesus. They didn't, they didn't think that God would come in the body. Now he's in everybody, but everybody hasn't received him. Iron sharpens iron. Absolutely. But we're all here for each other, and God uses everybody 
to touch one another. This is why I don't block people when they come to me, when they have an idea to share with me. I let them share it because I never know if that's God. I never know if that's God. Now, the enemy can, can come too. That's why you got to have discernment to know, to recognize a distraction from a focus. Discernment, wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to recognize differences. I'm not saying everybody is coming to you with the right intentions, but the Lord will lead you. Hey, cousin Tracy. What's up, Luke? What's up, everybody? My cousin on here. But guys, I just, I hope this helped you. I never know what the Lord is going to say, but the Lord is good and he should be magnified. He should be lifted. I'm doing these videos every day and I'm prophesying over my life. Every day I'm getting better and better. Every day I'm getting stronger and stronger and you should do the same thing, guys. I love you. Be blessed. Hey, Sanja. God bless you. showed up in my message when I was feeling down. Wow. Out of nowhere. It happened after I prayed to God. You blessed me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You added me. You just added me too. And I, I sent you a copy of my book, The Light. And the Lord, the Lord told me to send my book to people. And guess what? You was the first one to respond. And you added me on Facebook. So I don't think it's a coincidence at all that you added me. And I'm glad that the Lord used me. Because it's not me at all, but it's him. But guess what? I, ha I, I did have to do something. I had to let him use me. That's, that's one thing we got to do. We got to do some work. It's light. Wow, that's powerful. All glory to God. Thank you, Lord. See, and that's why I'm doing these videos. This is why, this is why the Lord wants me to do this. That one thing right there. If you were the only one watching this, I, I would be so, so happy that the Lord told me to do this. That, I'm so happy. Thank you, Lord, for using me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm glad that you're lifted up. You can do all things, Sanja, through Christ who strengthens you. All right? This is this is something my, my parents put in me. Amen. This is something my parents put in me. Because I used to, in school, I used to be, when I was younger, I used to be bad. I used to be bad. In elementary, I, I just used to do whatever. I remember one time I was so bad in elementary, that the principal went and got me McDonald's. That's how you know I was bad, to calm me down. But the Lord changed me, all right? He changed me when I got in high school. I started getting more wisdom, more insight. I started to see that my, my, uh, what I was doing in school, I started to recognize that I was actually hurting my family. God gave me, gave me wisdom, and I started to recognize I could still talk, but it's a proper time to talk. It's a proper time to do things. I could still have fun in school. I could still be solace. But there's a proper time. There's a time to respect the teacher. And my, my parents told me this. They say, look at, look at your teacher like you look at me. Because I at home, I honored my parents. But when I went to school, I was like, man, I don't need, like I was doing whatever I wanted. But once I started to look at my teachers like my parents, I realized that when I got in trouble, I would distract my parents from working, from doing whatever. Yeah, my, my parents own their own business now, but I would distract them from that. And all that, and it just God gave me wisdom to where I didn't want to. I didn't want to do that no more. Like I wanted to change. I wanted to be different. I wanted to be. I didn't want to be one of the you know cool people or whatever in school that got in trouble. I wanted to be one of the cool people in school that all the teachers liked. And so I shifted my whole my whole attitude, and and I, I did that. I got faith. My teachers loved me. My the principals loved me. I made a song for the principals. Always, it's like I didn't realize it. I, I, what I really wanted, I got it when I did the opposite of what I thought that I needed to do to get it. Like I thought I had to do whatever I wanted to get what I wanted, but actually, when I followed the rules, it, it made me free. I, I I can't really explain it to you, my best, but it, it was like when I started to respect my teachers, they started to respect me, like I really wanted it. I was trying to demand respect, but when I gave respect, I don't know, if, I hope this helped you. It, it might not be with school, but when I gave respect, they respected me. It was like I could go into other teachers' class. I could just, I mean, I finished my work. I got good grades, passed. I could go, I could go to other teachers and they would see me and they, you know, they'd be happy to see me. Go to the principal, office, the principal, like, I think that, I mean, 
that 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 was that that was good. That's what I wanted. I wanted it, but I was doing it the wrong way. When I was in elementary, I was trying to be bad and all this stuff. But it's crazy. I didn't know when well, you be good, you get all those rewards. I don't know what I'm talking. I don't know why I'm talking about this right now, but I hope this helped you. You don't have to. You don't have to be bad to get to get things like you don't have to force things to happen. I'm trying to say something. You don't have to force things to happen, guys. Let the Lord use you. Do what's right. Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. Do what's right. And everything. Yeah, do what's right. And everything that you really want will happen. You don't have to force people to respect you. Respect others. Look, Luke 638. I'm about to get off here. Give and it shall be given. It's powerful. I wish I knew this. I wish I knew this when I was in elementary. I know I was young, whatever. Middle school, whatever. I was young. But I still wish I knew this because I just, I think I would have did a lot better than I did. But I did I did do good once I went into high school. I started to get more wisdom on what really to do. The Lord gave me wisdom. But, you know, every everybody has to go through a process. But now I can, you know, help other people that are going through things. But one one thing that I want you to know is this, guys. I want you to start recognizing the people. I'm about to get off here. Recognize the people that are in your life. And I want you to honor them because they're not just random people. They're Jesus. God is there. Everybody. When, when I disrespect somebody, I'm disrespecting God because he made them. If you disrespect me, you're, you're not disrespecting me. You're disrespecting God. He made me. This is why Jesus says, love your enemies. Love those who persecute you, who do you wrong. All right? So, guys, just, just to give God all the glory, guys, let's give him all the glory right now. Lord, I thank you. Father, I magnify you. I lift your name up, Jesus. Father, God, I ask that you help everybody on here, Lord. Lord, I pray that you shut the mouth of the devil. I pray you shut his mouth. Lord, I pray that you stop him from accusing your people and lying to your people and making them feel guilty. Father God, let your people know. Let, let your sheep know that the devil is a liar. He's a liar. And you're the Messiah. So everything he's telling them right now, Lord, every lie, let them know that it's the opposite. So if he's telling them to stop lying, Lord, let them know that they're telling the truth. If he's telling them that they're ugly, let them know that they're beautiful, Lord. Whatever he's telling them, let them know what the truth is, God. Father, we glorify you. We lift you up. Lord, on purpose, I say Jesus. On purpose, I lift your name up. I, I go above and beyond to my best ability on purpose because I don't want anyone watching to get confused and to think that this is about Solace King IV. I don't want you to get confused, Lord, and think this is about me. But, Lord, I want your name to be glorified. I want to do these videos because you saved me. You helped me. When I was in times of need, you came through. When nobody else came through. When nobody applauded me, Lord. When nobody celebrated me, you said, get up. You hugged me. When I was down on my knees crying, you lifted me up. Your presence surrounded me like a shield. When I couldn't, when I couldn't lift my head up, you were the lifter up of my head. Father God, you gave me wealth. You gave me riches. You gave me healing. You protected me from dying in two car accidents that I could have died in. You protected me when I flew out the window on the freeway. When on my birthday, when I was turning, I believe, 10 or 9, whatever age it was. You protected me, Lord. You protected me when I almost drowned when I was younger. You had my, my friend's uncle come and save me in the water. I lift your name up, Lord. I magnify you on purpose because you're awesome. Even when I make mistakes, I know I'm not perfect, Lord, but I love you. Lord, we lift you up. We magnify you. Lord, I got everything I need. I'm not in need at all. I got you. I have everything I want. What, what do I want for? I'm, I don't, I got food, I got clothes, I got shoes, I got cars, I got friends, I got family, I got life, I got health, I got wealth. What do I want for? 
Nothing. I have dreams that I'm waiting for to be, they're going to be manifest. You already did it. But that's it. You, you did everything. So what is the concern? Father, I thank you for everything you're doing. Every good blessing you're doing. Father, I thank you. I hear you saying it's about to rain. And Lord, I pray that you extend the rain to the people listening. I pray that you make it rain on them. Lord, every day I do these videos, I want to give my all because I, I don't want to do this video without you. Because it wouldn't make sense to talk about the word of God without having the word. It wouldn't make sense for me to come on here, God. It wouldn't make sense for me to come on here, God, and you say I never knew you. It wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't make sense for me to work your will and not be rewarded by you, Lord. So, Father, I just ask that you back up the words that came out of my mouth, Lord, with miracles, signs, and wonders, Lord. You said my sheep know my voice. You said they know my voice. And no other voice. Hallelujah. No other voice will they follow. So, Father, we give you all the glory. We come to your presence in fear and trembling. Not because we're scared of you, Lord, but because we're in awe of you, because we, we, uh, we, we fear you and not actually fear you to where we're scared. But, Lord, we fear you to where we want to obey you. We fear you to where we, we're, we're scared to not listen because we know the consequences for disobedience. We want to obey, God. So I thank you, Lord, in advance. Jesus is the name I want you to think about every time you see me come on here. I don't want you to think about me. God, I want you to think about God, the Holy Spirit, the angels of the Lord. I want you to think about Jesus. I want you to go. When you get off of here, read your Bible more. This is why I'm doing these videos. I'm not doing this for me. I want you to fall in love with Jesus like you never have before. Listen, this isn't, this isn't no religion. This isn't no, this, this is a relationship. The reason I'm doing this, you don't have to do this. Okay, it doesn't take, all, it doesn't take no work to be saved. You just receive it. You confess with your mouth. Jesus is Lord. I guess that, that's the word, but it doesn't take a lot. It doesn't take a labor. You can't boast. He did it already. Okay, so me doing all these videos, it doesn't make me no better than you. I want you to know that. This doesn't make me better than you at all. Okay? All of us are equal. When you're saved, you're, we're equal. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to be obedient. I want to be obedient. Just like a football player goes hard in their training. A basketball player go hard. A movie actor. One of my dad's good friends, uh, he's a movie actor. He played play in a lot of movies. Right? A lot of great movies. You know him. But I was in the car with him when we were, when we were with him. And he was working hard. He said, this is how you get the money, Silas. He went hard. And he loves Christ. All the time, he always, I remember this. When he was in the car, he always says, thank you, Jesus. Praise in tongues. Thank you, Jesus. That's one. It, that's that's the secret weapon right there. Thank you, Jesus. But he went hard for his movie for his movie acting, right? So why can't I go hard for the kingdom? I want you to go hard for God, guys. I want you to give your all. There's always a reward for your obedience. There's always a reward when you obey God, when you honor Him, when you lift Him up. Paul and Silas prayed. And sing, they sing hymns, right? They sang, sung ham, hymns, hymns to the Lord. They praised them. They prayed to him and praised him. And everybody heard them. So that means they wasn't quiet. They were loud. Speak up. Get loud. Be bold. Be courageous. Let your words be heard. Let your worship be heard. Let your praise be heard. Because you never know who need to hear it. Just like the young lady, uh, Sandra, said she needed to, whatever the Lord led me to do, she needed it. You never know. So whatever it is God tells you to do, let it be known. Paul and Silas, they were loud because everybody heard them, all the, the prisoners. They all heard them. All right, they all heard them. And when they heard them, guess what? God, he sent the earthquake. And all the prisoners were freed. All their chains fell off of them. That's powerful. All their chains fell off of them. And every door. Do, do, I don't think you understand this stuff. Because when he talked about every door. Listen. Every chain. The chains were holding them from accomplishing what God wanted them to do. 
And the door was holding them down too. Was holding them from uh, from getting out. So when he said every chain and every door, he was talking about every chain that's holding you back. And every door that's supposed to be open for you to go to the next level. Was open. But not just for them, even for the people who wasn't obeying God. When you get around a praiser in a prayer, I'm going to leave you with this. Things will begin to happen. Guys, be blessed. God did it. Remember that? You're going to watch these videos again. I'm sending people to these videos. Once I'm finished this year, I'm going to be sending people to these. As God begins to bless me, like he told me. And if there's going to be people, young people, old people, they're going to be like, Silas, how did this happen? I'm going to say, go watch these videos. See what the Lord took me through. See how I did not quit. See how I stay consistent even when it hurt. Look at these videos. Over 500. It's probably, I think it's going to be about 700 when I finish. Look through them. They're free I'm on YouTube. Look through them. Why are you quitting? Why can't you stay consistent with what God told you to do? When will you commit to the work and the will of the Father? Be blessed, guys. Share this. Somebody needs to hear this. God bless. Lord, I can't stop. Hallelujah. Give him glory. Jesus, I bless you. I want to give him glory until everything is out of me. God bless. Thank you, Lord.